Want to gain muscle and size, but not a lot of body fat? Watch this. Our next caller is Parth from Massachusetts. What's up, Parth? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Um, first of all, I, I really want to thank you. I've been listening to Mind Pump for around two years now. And um, earlier, I used to hate doing daily chores like doing the dishes, laundry, or cooking. Now I look forward to them since I always have Mind Pump on. Yeah. So, tell, your, tell your wife you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> are, you putting so, those dish, uh, are you putting those dishes away right in the dishwasher? Yeah, that makes a difference. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. So I have two questions, uh, both kind of unrelated to each other. The second question is more topical since we just had uh, Valentine's Day. So, uh, so my first question is about training volume. Uh, just to give you some background, I used to be overweight in 2019. Um, I read Bigger, Leaner, Stronger and learned about calorie deficit. And then I got down to uh, 10% body fat. Wow. Uh, so, so since last year, I've been really trying to lean bulk. Uh, and I have been following uh, the BLS routine since November. But I feel like my volume is inadequate uh, since I'm gaining around 1.5 to 2 pounds uh, per week. So my calorie intake is on point. I, I track my sleep. Uh, I'm a consistent person in general. So my first question is, uh, how do you really know if you are doing too few exercises or sets or volume, and should I be uh, changing my routine? Ooh, that's a good question. Well, first off, your Mike Matthews is a good friend of ours, and he's got good information. So if you're following something that he's recommending, chances are you're doing most things right. Okay, so let's now put that aside for a second. Let me ask you a few questions. You said you're getting mm -hmm. one and a half to two pounds of body fat a week. Are you tracking body fat percentage as well? Uh, so I have like an in-body scanner at home, which isn't really accurate, but it sort of helps me identify trends. And so I know my body fat percentage is going uh, up. Okay. Is it how, like, how, I mean, because here's the thing that from just first glance, the, the pound to two pounds a week is not necessarily bad. And the fact that we know that you're, you're going to probably put on a little bit of body fat. How, is it uh, is it moving relatively fast compared to where you? I mean, and what you said was mm -hmm. perfect too. You're watching trends, right? So that's what matters most is where you were before you trend on the in body scan. Where were you uh, before Absolutely. you started the bulk, and then where are you now? Yeah. So so close to. So this is again. Uh, these are not accurate numbers since it's the machine. So uh, I'm just identifying trends. But basically, in August 2020, the machine showed that my body fat percentage was around 10, 11 percent, and right now I'm at 19 percent. Okay. Uh, okay. And I'm, I'm, I weigh uh, 195 pounds. Uh, back then, when I was at my leanest, I was 157. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So, yeah, I mean, you, the way that I would judge the fat gain, muscle gain, or the way I would correct that is really with my caloric intake. So I would bring the calories down a little bit. You might be in too much of a caloric surplus. Now, in regards to your workouts, uh, are you getting stronger? Do you Are you building good muscle? Do you feel improvements in performance? If the answer to that is yes, then you're doing you're okay. Now, if the answer okay. to that is no, um, then the other questions I would ask are: Do you feel excessively sore, fatigued, stiff, or inflamed? If the answer is yes to that, then I'd say you're doing too much volume, not the other way around. Now, if you're not gaining muscle and you're not getting super sore, you're not feeling stiffness, you feel really good, uh, then mm -hmm. maybe you can increase some volume in your workouts. But well, it really depends on on those things. Let's talk about the calories a little bit. Where where were you? Uh, in the cut yeah. and then where were you what where are you at now calorie wise so what's tell me yeah absolutely so so my tde is around 2500 uh my when i uh when i'm on my lean bulk i usually eat around 2900 and uh, when i was cutting i was eating around 2200 so those are the numbers and uh i'm doing around 0. 0.5 to 0. 0.8 uh pound uh, of protein per pound so it's around 155 156 grams of protein uh, and I also track my my fat and carbs. So okay. it sounds like you got. I mean, you sound like you're in pretty good. But the only difference I'd probably make is when you went from 22, maybe I'd go to like 25. Yeah, uh, just maybe. I, I just did the math on your body, and I hope I'm right here. I just did the math on your body fat percentage, lean body mass. So your lean body mass, your body fat. Sorry, your total weight was 157 at 10 percent body fat. Mm -hmm. Now you're 190 at 19 percent body fat. That's correct. Uh, according to the machine, yes. Okay, so your lean body mass went from 141 to 153. That's pretty if, damn good. That's not bad, yeah. but he also went from 157 to 190. Right, which is why I think that you just, a little too much calories, but that's everything a, else is pretty good. Like yeah. when what Sal was alluding to earlier about, you know, if you're getting stronger and we're putting muscle on, there's not a problem with the volume of training. 
your volume gotcha. of your volume of training is is probably on spot on and you're doing just fine you're probably just either one underestimating how many calories you're actually eating or you just didn't need that much and so i would just uh, instead of doing 28 2900 i'd probably pull back more like 24 2500 yeah. and see how your body responds well can you tell me gotcha. i'm not as familiar with this programming in terms of like rep range and like what mm -hmm. we're switching up uh, phase wise like what yeah. what does that look like for you and have you done like a one to five rep range mm -hmm. yeah absolutely so bls usually has uh, around four exercises three of them are compound movements and then the one is usually in isolation. Mm -hmm. So on a typical chest day, you have a uh, incline bench press, normal bench press, and then incline bench press with dumbbells, and then probably a rear fly. So you usually have uh, three compounds and one isolation, and you're supposed to go, you're supposed to do three hard sets for each of these compounds. Mm -hmm. uh, and the rep range is uh, usually four to uh, seven, four to eight. Yeah, you're, you're, it's a body part split, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So it's... Uh, yeah, it's, it's a four-day routine. I, I am following the four-day routine, but it's uh, upper, lower, um, core. Throw them on and performance then, uh, or aesthetic. Yeah, yeah I was mm -hmm. going to say, now how often have you switched that up in terms of, you know, like changing all the acute variables? Uh, yeah, it's been a while. Uh, I haven't switched it up since uh, November last year. Yeah, that would be my Ma recommendation. Parth, yeah. let's, um, we're going to go MAPS Anabolic. Parth, I'm going to send you MAPS Anabolic. So I love Mike. He's got awesome. great programming. I think we're a little better just because we've been <laughs> we've been we've we trained a lot of people. provide you new stimulus. Yeah, but no, Mike's Mike's great. Okay, but yeah. I'm gonna have you. I'm gonna send you Not Maps Anabolic. Mike. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to Maps Anabolic, do three foundation. So there's two options. There's two or three foundational workouts a week. I want you to do the three foundational workouts a week, and then mm -hmm. on every other off day, I want you to do three trigger sessions a day. So let's switch gotcha. to that program, and you should see faster muscle growth. And a boost in metabolism. I think it wouldn't hurt you also to maybe reduce calories a little bit. So, you know, maybe okay. not go all the way down to what your cut was at 22. Maybe land somewhere around 25, 26 yeah. and see how you feel with also gotcha. switching the stimulus with the new programming. Those two things, I think we should see uh, nice. I, I, hopefully, if we do a really good job, you actually don't see the scale move too much. You feel like you're getting a little stronger and a little leaner. Mm -hmm. if, we hit the, if we hit you right where we want to calorie-wise... Uh, and right. with the new stimulus, we should kind of see that response. So the other part I want to do so we can keep up with you, because I'm very curious to see how your body responds when we do this, is uh, let's throw you. You're not in our private forum, are you? No. All right, I'm going to have Doug put you in our private forum. So make sure you uh, awesome. look for access in the Facebook private, Mind Pump private forum. Mm -hmm. And then I would just love to get some updates from you. Just tag anytime you get in the forum and you write anything uh, to make sure that one of us sees it. Just make sure you tag us. And then mm -hmm. uh, we'll keep an eye on uh, how the programming and everything is going. Yeah, and, and, and that's that's wonderful. That's actually a, a great segue to my next question. Um, so, uh, so I actually recently moved in with my girlfriend, and uh, before her, I used to be super laser focused with my tracking calories, uh, like in the last two two and a half months. And so now that we cook and eat together, uh, tracking has actually gotten much harder, even though I still track. Uh, so my question is, what are some strategies you would recommend for tracking and staying focused for nutrition, even when you are sharing food with someone who doesn't really track? Well, yeah. since, since you're washing get a, get all a the new girlfriend, since no. you're washing all the dishes, <laughs> doing all the laundry, and doing all the chores, I would, I would, ruin everything. yeah, I would, I would say, look, I'm doing all the chores. You need to weigh and measure my food. Make so sure so here's what here's what I do with uh, when so Katrina actually used to cook for me, and we'd actually eat no, relatively normal meals for somebody who was prepping for shows. Um, so, and, it, and I only had to do it one, one time it does, it's a little bit of work the first time, but yeah. And th I think this is the easy way to do when you like, let's say you make like, so she makes this quinoa pasta dish. I love it. Reminds me of like lasagna. It's got some ground, it's got ground beef or ground Turkey we put in it. But what I do is the, the first time that she preps it, I actually calculate everything that's going in it. Right, because I'm not gonna eat that whole pan in one sitting, but I can figure out the total protein in there, the total carbs, the total fat, and the whole dish. And then based off of how many squares I have, did I eat a quarter of it? Did I eat half of it? Did I eat three quarters of it? I can get a, a, a more accurate estimation on a on a dish that would be really hard for people to track. Where people go wrong is they don't calculate all that up, and they just kind of try and guess. They like try a, afterwards. Yeah, they try afterwards to try and figure it out. And that can get really tough to estimate your calories. And then once I've done that one time, 
you know, I, I don't know how what you guys are like, but you know, I tend to rotate through the mm -hmm. same ten dinners or so. You know, what I'm saying like, and once I've got it written down one time, I've got a pretty good estimation on how many calories, how much protein, which are the two main things that I'm really paying attention to when I'm tracking. Uh, does does this dish have, and how much of that dish? What what fraction of that did I eat of that dish? Because I'm probably going to put the other half in the refrigerator. I can kind of figure out. That's my recommendation on trying to do trying to you know, eat normal with a girlfriend and have, you know, prepare meals like that is it's a little, little work at the beginning to track and figure out what the total amount is in the dish. But once I got that down, anytime I go revisit, like another thing I love to do is like a big chili dish, rich that's got all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff in it, uh, which would be really hard to figure out if I'm just like spooning it in from this big pot. But if I know what the yeah. total pot is, I, c I have a better guesstimation on what I'm probably consuming. And does that make sense? Absolutely. No, cool. that's, that's really helpful. All cool. right. Thank um, yeah, and so before we uh, end this conversation, I just have one quick message for for your audience. So, um, so until seven months ago, um, I used to be the guy who would straight away skip to questions and answers, since I felt that that's where I got most value. And boy, I was wrong. Uh, soon enough, I realized that uh, I have. Soon enough, I realized what I had been missing out on, and how much fun and info packed the introductions are. So, uh, so my advice is, don't be that guy. Uh, <laughs> it's 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 like skipping leg day so that's just my advice well, to you. i love that advice uh, parth. Uh, i love thank that you. i love that bro Appreciate thank you it. thank you parth. thanks parth. see thank you see you in the forum nice man thank you all right yeah that's uh i mean he was, he was on track you're just eating a little too much yeah no yeah. you know yeah. what At, now after we heard the second question He's probably underestimating what he's eating. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, and he's uh, happy. He's probably yeah, in love. Yeah, yeah, how that is. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, as far as everything else, I mean, I, th I think he's he's pretty damn close. I bet you the only thing that's happening is that he he probably increased a little more than he needed, mm -hmm. and or he was also probably uh, under calculating what. Or he's just like dinner is really the big. Uh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. That's why I use that. That's why I use that uh, example is what we would do, and that's what Katrina and I would do it. It would be a little laborious. The the first, like what, getting it all tracked one yeah, time. But you know, there's two pounds of meat in here. There's, that's right. Yeah, a pound of pasta or whatever. Yeah, and, and, and it's, pay attention to that and it's one e meal. Yeah, and then it's easier to estimate. It, normally, I would eat half of whatever it is. She normally yeah. eats about a quarter. There's normally you know another quarter, quarter and a half that's left over, and I can get an idea of okay, what I. Just yeah, and, and I just learned something too from this question, and that is that we help people do chores. So if your partner <laughs> yeah. is not doing enough chores, have them hey, listen to my pump. <laughs> doing good things. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.